What's going on guys, it's Hi, and I've recently been in the market for a bronze watch. And there's really no particular reason aside from the fact that I just think that it's cool to have a material that uniquely patinas and ages with my personal use. That being said, I have been a bit on the fence about just getting a bronze watch in general, but nevertheless, I have narrowed my options down to two different watches. One being the Tudor Black Bay Bronze at $4,050, and the other being the Oris Big Crown Pointer Day 80th Anniversary Edition at $2,000. Both are seemingly great watches, but I just couldn't pull the trigger. I couldn't make the multi-thousand dollar investment on a material that I wasn't 100% sure in. So the idea of getting a bronze watch was put on the back burner. Then one day, I just saw a listing for the Glycine Combat Sub 42mm bronze at $415. And I just knew that I was how to get it. Well, it just arrived today. I haven't unboxed it, I haven't looked at the watch, and we are going to go on this journey together. We're going to get inside this product, get our first impressions, and see what it's all about. Here is the box that the Glycine Combat Sub comes in. Fairly simple, an all black box with nothing but the logo on top, and nothing on the sides except for the reference number and the barcode. Getting inside of the box, we first have a piece of paper, and it's actually a letter. It says, Dear Valued Customer, Please note, the case material of your glycine watch is made of bronze. Bronze will oxidize when exposed to air, developing a patina. Thanks, Glycine Direct Team. Actually, on the top lid of the box, it's some more paperwork that just got jammed up in there, so let's see what this is. As you can see, this is the international guarantee, and inside is the international guarantee card, which shows my watch's specific number, so I'm not going to show it. But on the back is an additional piece of paper, which is like a quick start guide and shows the crown's various positions and what it does. Let's get into the actual watch itself, and as you can see, inside of the outer cardboard box is another glycine box. This one is also very simple like the first box, all black with just the Glycine logo on top. Now let's take a look at this combat sub for the first time. And there it is. Now you may be wondering why this combat sub is packaged in such a way. It's actually completely shrink wrapped and airtight inside of this baggie. This included letter actually explains it all because once again it says that please note the case material on your glycine watch is made of bronze. Bronze will oxidize when exposed to air developing a patina coating. So this shrink wrap packaging is essentially just a way of protecting the watch from being exposed to really anything. Exposed to the air, exposed to people handling it and it just helps to prevent any patina from developing prior to purchase. But of course I purchased this watch with the intention of getting that patina so I'm going to go ahead and open up this packaging, free this watch up so we can really see what it looks like. And here is the moment of truth, once I cut this open, there is no going back, the watch will never be the same again, so... And here we go. First time touching my Glycine Combat Sub. Bronze. Upon first impressions of seeing this watch in hand for the first time, I have to say, this watch looks so much better in person and is absolutely gorgeous. But now that we finally have the watch in hand, let's take a closer look at some of its features. The Glycine Combat Sub GL0187 features a 42mm bronze case with unidirectional turning bezel. Unlike the case, the bezel ring itself is actually made from aluminum. The dial of the watch is what Glycine calls charcoal black and features a gradient. Towards the top by 12 o'clock the dial is a lighter shade of grey and works itself to black by 6 o'clock. If you don't like the charcoal black, there is a gradient brown dial version reference GL0188, a gradient blue dial reference GL0174 and GL0242, and even a gradient green dial version reference GL0281. Also if this 42mm case is too small for you, there is a 48mm version reference GL0200 or GL0243. I'm actually still unsure of how I feel about this gradient dial. I would have much preferred a radial gradient which would have made the design more uniform rather than this vertical gradient. The dial also features applied indices with a rose gold border and super luminova. The hour and minute hand features a similar treatment with a brushed rose gold coating and super luminova. 
For contrast, the combat sub features an all red second hand with more super luminova. Protecting all of this is a flat sapphire crystal with three layers of anti reflective coating on the underside. On the back is a solid steel screw down case back. This is fairly common for bronze watches as stainless steel will not react to the skin and will not patina over time. This is a good design choice considering that had the case back have been made of bronze, it would have liked to patina very quickly with all the exposure to the skin and this may be uncomfortable and can also irritate the skin. However, I would have liked the color of the case back to match the rest of the case. This is something that other bronze watch manufacturers do and it really pulls everything together. It's not like this isn't possible for glycine because after all, the strap buckle is also made of stainless steel but as you can see, it's treated to match the case. The silver is such a stark contrast and to me is unappealing. It's just a good thing that this part of the watch never gets seen with normal use. This combat sub ships with a composite strap. The exterior of the strap is a fabric material embossed with something reminiscent of a brick pattern and is bonded to the interior calf leather layer. To me the strap feels comfortable on the wrist because of the leather but the exterior looks cheap and synthetic because of the pattern that Glycine went with. The perceived value of the strap would have been higher had they gone with a smooth texture, a more natural leather grain, or an alligator grain print. One thing that I would like to point out on the GL0187 spec sheet, it lists the strap as having 24mm horns and 22mm buckle. I've never seen a manufacturer list horns but it would make sense to assume that they meant the strap is 24mm apart at the lugs and tapered to 22mm at the buckle. This apparently is not so because the watch actually takes 22mm straps. Again if you want to fit this watch case with different straps then buy 22mm straps. The bronze combat sub features the caliber GL224 Swiss automatic movement which is a modified ETA2824-2. This movement vibrates at 28,800 beats per hour and has a power reserve of 38 hours. Now I'm not going to be one of those people who is going to sit here and act like I'm knowledgeable on this movement. Aside from the quick google search, I have no frame of reference for it. But according to the internet, this does seem to be a reliable workhorse that is widely used. This means that I should have some longevity and if it were to have some issues, you should be able to get it repaired with ease and for a decent price. To me the only minor letdown of this movement is a 38 hour power reserve. This would make it the shortest power reserve of all of my watches. It's just a shame that you can't go at least two full days without winding it, but it is what it is. Earlier I mentioned a few other bronze watches that I was interested in prior to purchasing this Glycine Combat Sub, one of them being the Tudor Black Bay, and if you're familiar with that watch, then I'm sure that you can see that there are some very similar design cues. I don't know which watch came out first, but the original brown Black Bay Bronze was introduced in 2016, and later in 2019, a black Black Bay Bronze was also introduced. According to the official Glycine website, all of its bronze watches are new for 2019, and if this is so, then we can assume where Glycine got its inspiration for the Combat Sub Bronze design. But that is neither here nor there, this is not a video comparing the two watches, but if you're interested in the Tudor Black Bay Bronze 2016 or 2019 version, then this is definitely a good lower budget alternative. List MSRP for this watch is over $8,000, but I've seen some dealers try to sell it for $1,100, $1,200, and that is absolutely insane. You should not be paying that much for this watch. I've seen the Glycine Combat Sub Bronze for around $600 regularly, I think for that price it's fair. But if you're like me and get lucky, again I got it for $415 with manufacturer warranty, then I think even anywhere around this price, this watch is an absolute steal. I'm pretty excited to start wearing this watch and to see how it patinas over time with my personal use, and I think that's where the fun of a bronze watch is. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Share it around. Comment down below with any thoughts or questions you may have. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.